Greetings, hello, welcome everyone, welcome to Dev Chatter. Hi, uh, my name is Brendan. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. Feel free to follow along or ask questions if you uh, are ever wondering about anything during the stream. Um, obviously, I am the host of the Dev Chatter live stream, uh, but we are actually a community of developers who are all interested in programming, improving the stuff that we do, and uh, coding cool stuff for people to use. So that's our that's our big thing, that's what we like to do here. So uh, if that sounds fun to you, welcome. Uh, feel free to follow along. Uh, I want to make sure that I uh, say hello to everyone that showed up in chat today and has already said something. Uh, so um, I know I saw Andre uh, a while ago and I, I think I cleared up my messages since then, but uh, welcome to the stream. Um, what? Can my bot not start right now? Sorry about that beep, everyone. Uh, so, welcome. Uh, I saw SNB in there, so welcome, Janisku. And um, who's, uh, who's the other name in there? Uh, on, on Nurse, uh, on Dev, uh, maybe? Um, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but either way, welcome. Glad you're here, everyone. Uh, hopefully you're having a fantastic Saturday. Uh, it is pretty nice here where I am. Um, we are not yet uh, in, in any of those uh, winter weather storms that some other parts of the world are, are getting here in the northern hemisphere. Um, but welcome, everyone. Uh, it's cold. It, is a little, it is a little cold here, I'll give you that. But it's not, it's not as bad as it could be. Uh, so some good sun, some good weather. Uh, but obviously, uh, being <laughs> developers, we've got to spend a little bit of time uh, inside uh, here with a green screen and, uh, and a computer. Uh, but should be fun all the same. Uh, so, welcome everyone. And uh, yes, for those of you that are just noticing, um, Janisku did control the color of that menu, uh, which actually is through one of the programs that we build here on the stream. Uh, it actually does a lot more than than what you're seeing there because that's actually uh, controlling uh, Final Fantasy VII, as you can tell from the instructions there. Uh, and <laughs> Janisku is also demonstrating that you can control the color separately of our overlay in general. Uh, okay, uh, I want to change a couple of things. First off, what is... so get rid of that header. What does this one say right now? Coding exercises. Looks good. <laughs> so that is what is the plan for today. Um, I thought it would be cool to do some more coding exercises streams. We haven't done one in a while, so um, I thought let's go ahead and do one of these. We've been digging into Interactive 7 for a while. That's that program there that uh, controls Final Fantasy 7. Um, it controls a bunch of different things, all the equipment, the items for the characters, the names for the characters. You control the menu colors, uh, status effects on the characters, things like that. So it's a fun little game project where we're, um, instead of building a game, we are modifying an, an existing running game for streamers. So we're essentially building a tool that would let a streamer give their Twitch chat control of their game. So pretty cool stuff. Okay, um couple of things I do want to mention, so I brought the bot in. Uh, so if you are interested in chatting with us, I mentioned that we are a community. Uh, it is absolutely not just me here in Dev Chatter. I am just the host of the live stream. Uh, we have a Discord chat, and our community is really a fantastic group. Uh, I, I love every time I look in there, and there is actually just someone answering a question for someone else, which is a cool little thing. Um, obviously, you know, it's, it's not Stack Overflow, but uh, it uh, is a good place to chat about stuff. Um, and I'm going to toss out some links to other things as well. Uh, feel free to take a look. There are links down below as well. All right. Let's dive right in. So, I have gone to a site here that is called uh, Code Wars. Uh, we have been on this... Uh, um, We've been on this site on past streams before, though I'm not necessarily going to work directly in here. I might take what's here, convert it, and, and you know, into Visual Studio pieces and work with it there, uh, just so that um, the system works a bit better. But we'll see what happens. Uh, hey, the Michael Jolly, welcome. Uh, I only barely spotted your name there because it blended in with uh, the colors above it. But greetings, <laughs> Stack Underclog. That is a not a nice nickname. Okay, um, so I just picked a random kata. Uh, this one looked interesting. I don't think we've done it before. So this one is decimal two factorial and back. So 
Let's go ahead and read real fast. I'm gonna do the coding in Visual Studio, so don't worry too much about the text here being kind of small and condensed. We'll code in Visual Studio so you don't have to try to read this. Uh, so coding decimal numbers with factorials is a way of writing out numbers in a base system that depends on factorials rather than powers of numbers. Uh, the last digit is always zero and is in base zero. The digit before that is either zero or one and is in base one factorial. The digit before that is either zero, one, or two and is in base two factorial. Zero through N and is in base N. Okay, so 463 would be, so 463 and base 10, uh, so you wouldn't have any, so that's one plus, the zero is silly, like why would you even include that? All the numbers would always end in zero, right? When would you ever not have a zero on the end? Because you can always add zero. Uh, okay, so we have a one, there's no twos. Uh, a one in this is gonna be really two, so that, that at this point we have three, I believe. Um, no, it's base one factorial. Well, that's one. 3 factorial is going to be really 6. I am super confused by that right now. A zero factorial is one. Oh yeah, and we don't we don't have a one on the end is what it's saying, which is weird. That is super weird. Super super weird. Why would you do it this way? So there's apparently a factorial numbering system. Hey, Zeb Code. Uh, we are looking at uh, doing a kata that asks us to take our numbers and put them in a factorial number system. <laughs> I, mean, I get that it's the intention, uh, PD Rasta, but um, <laughs> it's still a weird thing. Uh, So, one, one, two, six. Twenty four, one twenty. So, how many digits did their example go up to? They did a six digit number, and they said that was three. To be six short, so 96. Uh, so, and then what's the next number down? Six. So then that would make up for the missing and increase by two. So that would be 462 at that point. And then it would add in a single one. Now I guess what I'm wondering about is if, is if both the first and second digit, if either of these could be one, 
would it be equally valid to write it like this? Are those, those appear to be the same number. Uh, yeah, here's the, here's the Code Wars link, uh, if anyone is, is interested. Um, and that'll, that'll toss you into C-sharp, by the way. Um, oh, that's an interesting one. That's just, that's just weird, because I, I kind of sit there and I think, like, that might actually be the same thing? Funny enough. Um... Let's go ahead and create a test project. I'm going to toss these uh, over in uh, Visual Studio just so that you can all see everything a little bit easier. Um, do I actually want to create a test project or just put it in the same one? You know what? We're just going to put it in the same one. Same project. One project for all the tests. Um, so, and I'm just going to call it a test the test fixture for now. Uh, whoops. Um. Oh, end unit. I need you. Um. So let's uh, actually let's uh, let's x unit this. We're gonna x unit. And in addition, we're also going to use, uh, well, no, we don't need to fluent assertion it, but we will x-unit it. Okay, there we go. Doop, doop. Okay, so X unit doesn't call it assert R equal. They say uh, um, assert equal. Um, hang on one second, everyone. Got to gotta fill something in there in chat. Very important. Yeah, Zeb code, exactly. The, it's a, the question's a little confusing, so um, people might want to wait until I get further in. Like, uh, if you didn't understand what it's talking about, that took me a second to figure out as well. Uh, mainly because I don't know the math be like the the math behind it's a little confusing. So um, something I think a lot of people don't realize about programming is in order to actually program almost anything, you have to get a base understanding of the domain that you're programming for. So if I want to do things related to um, color, like we did over here and we've done in a few of our other projects, I have to get a better understanding of not just the color in terms of like RGB values, because a lot of people get that, um, but if you want to do some more advanced stuff, you have to start learning more about, you know, hue saturation and light, for example, and other things like that, in order to, you know, get that to work out. Um, and obviously that's a pretty simple case, uh, but, uh, you know, I've worked in a lot of different domains like uh, online advertising, for example. I know a lot about on online advertising because I have worked in that industry before. So any industry that you, that you have to program for, you have to learn. So... Uh, really, really uh, surprising thing to a lot of people about programming is just how much we have to learn. Okay, um, this is expecting... Okay, so that was... For some reason, they let us make this, um, but whatever. So they did this as a static class, which is fine. I'm okay with how they built this um, for the initial thing. Uh, let's rename the file to match this. There we go. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of those. And that's seriously the only test they gave us? Was that one test? That's literally the only test? This could really use some more tests. So I guess we're going to do the reverse test. Because, um, you know, we're not crazy people. <laughs> and SMV started up a rainbow over there. Uh, okay, so... Uh, fact uh, to des uh, should something or other and this will be decimal to factorial should um, not ideal test names yet but we'll fix that stuff <laughs> Roy G Biv thanks uh, speaking of all those uh, what did you do add server logic um, oh uh, so 
Yeah, so related to online advertising, I have uh, built multiple advertising engines, three actually, for uh, different companies. One of them uh, actually was uh, the uh, a company that did advertising specifically to uh, developers, so mostly Microsoft developers. So if you were on any... Um, yeah, Vial, I know. I, I will fix that name in a minute. Uh, so if you were on any of the websites like... Um, uh, Code Project or ASP Alliance, or uh, even if you were on the official ASP.NET web forums or something like that, uh, you know, a decade or so ago, uh, you were absolutely looking at advertisements that had uh, been served by the ad engine that uh, that I developed. Um, so it. Um, uh, what I actually built for that is both the ad management platform that uh, both publishers and advertisers would go into to uh, set up all their campaigns and all their advertisements, all their placements and everything like that, as well as where publishers would go uh, to get all the tags and everything that they would end up putting on their site uh, to manage all the different uh, you know types of advertisements they wanted to be able to show, uh, as well as both which advertisers, which types of um, you know ads they wanted to be able to see all that stuff, all the reporting and everything like that, uh, as well as uh, the actual server uh, components that served up the ads. So like the, you know, instant response, uh, selecting the correct advertisement to show in the correct place, the correct time uh, kind of thing. So uh, yes, so um, I've, I've done that multiple times, uh, th those types of setup. Uh, one for a, an advertising network, which is the one I'm, I'm talking about, but also then for um, individual publishers that um, maintain smaller networks of uh, websites. So, yep, yeah, uh, so we're going to say, whoops, actually that is that, and we're going to say uh, fact to desk string, and we're going to reverse this just to make sure that it can go both ways, because it should be able to, um, and we're going to say 463. Uh, so, right now, obviously, this is not going to work. I'm going to catch up on chat. Don't worry. Uh, but, um, this is supposed to return a string. Okay. And this is supposed to return a number. Here we go. Now it should compile. And we can fix these names and everything in a moment. Uh, I just want to get it... Uh, oh, yeah. We do have to ins uh, put the SDK on this project in order for it to work. Because I didn't create this as a test project. This is just a class library. Uh, so, thankfully, ReSharper knows that I did not grab that NuGet package yet and adds it for me. Um, okay. <laughs> yes, SNB, that's correct. I'm responsible for all the advertisements on the web. Uh, no, what I'm responsible for is making sure that those publisher sites that provide the articles that you read to learn stuff about programming uh, are able to continue serving all of those and that the websites are able to pub pay the authors uh, who wrote those articles to continue writing them. Uh, so that's one of those things is a lot of people hate advertising and I sit there and I'm like, but that's what makes it, you know, possible to have, you know, so many good sites full of, you know, free content. Yeah, it's like, you watch advertise. <laughs> okay, um, so we, uh, let's see. Uh, what are the questions? Um, oh yeah, Vile, I, I will absolutely fix those names in a second. Um, I think it's about adding numbers together until we get the right output. Yeah, sort of. Uh, you could perhaps cheat and use the... <laughs> we're not using machine learning on this. Uh, Julius, thank you very much for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh... Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, basically everything right after media planning. Yep, that would be correct. <laughs> All right. Um... Will this run now? Oh, no. Yep, we have to install the XUnit runner uh, for Visual Studio as well uh, so that it can run it in here. And now that both of those are gone, now it should run these tests. And we'll fix the names and everything. Yeah, um, <laughs> I do try to fix them. Uh, okay, good. Both tests are failing. Are they failing for the right reason? Uh, they should just be because numbers are wrong. Absolutely. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So empty string versus that. Uh, so obviously they don't match. And then this. Okay, good. So the tests are doing exactly what we want. They're showing us where the errors are. Let's uh, make them, you know, correct. Um, uh, so for now, I'm actually just going to make this... Uh, 
simple deck uh, that uh, because I didn't make the test fixture focused on that so then we're gonna do uh, simple fact of debt uh, and we're gonna say works and we're gonna make these theories with test cases essentially uh, so what we're gonna do is change from fact to theory and then we're gonna say inline data and yes I know your tests aren't passing yet Brendan what are you doing why are you making changes already uh, and the short answer is um, okay so this one's taking in the long and uh, expecting that so that is uh, input uh, string expected okay and then this one we're gonna do basically the same thing except switch the types okay so that one expects that and that okay so let's switch these out to be uh, a test case initially now uh, so if you don't know what it is I'm doing, the quick explanation is I am making it, so if you haven't seen anyone do test cases in unit testing before, um, oh, um, I have this backwards. Okay, I am passing in this as the, as the values to this method essentially. So I'm telling the test runner, hey, make a test for each row of this that I have, so I can actually make additional ones of these. And it will run the test once for each one of these inputs and it'll pass them into these values and run the assertion so this lets me test a lot of different uh, cases all at once so that we don't have to um, either make a whole series of identical tests uh, or um, you know put loops and things like that in our tests because that would get weird okay so now I want to get the same exact failure for the same exact reason. So that's what we're going to check. We want to make sure that we're still getting those those same ones, which it should happen just straight out of the box pretty much. Okay. So uh, we expected that, but we got an empty string. Good. And we expected that, but got zero. Okay. So test fail for the same reason. Um, uh, are you sitting? Uh, yes, Mobabo, I am sitting today. I am not, uh, I'm not standing. Um, would it make sense to make this one test instead of two? Uh, every afternoon. Uh, these are actually calling, uh, two separate methods. So I could do a method that says I can do a full conversion. So, um, we could do this. Uh, we could say, um... Converting to fact and back or, uh, works, right? We could we could do something like that, um, where we only have the input, and we expect the input as the output, um, and we could do something like this. So we could say var um, fact equals this. And then, ah, if I could type, um, pass it in there, and expect to get back uh, the input. So we we could do that and confirm that it that it can do a full pass through. Um, we could do that. Um, we could do a single assertion uh, where you flip it and you say these these are equal. Um, but I feel like this is doing these are testing two different methods and this is testing them together to make sure that it the values really do go through Exactly as SMB points out they are different methods That's the part that's weird about the naming we kept the same naming that their system did uh, And the only reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to copy this out and put it back in their site to confirm that it works so and I've put it in Visual Studio because it's a little bit a nicer environment for us to work in and we can see what's going on with it. Um, so everyone here can can look at this and, and tell what's going on because uh, most of us are, are used to looking at things in Visual Studio, not in a, a web interface like that. Okay, so we want to uh, take a number and convert it. So let's let's look at the problem again. So it's saying, um, 
All right, so. So let me just make sure that I cover this because there is a chance that there is someone out there that doesn't know what this is. So uh, before I've totally lost anyone, the point of this exercise is to take numbers and convert them into this different um, storage mechanism. So to give the quick explanation, um, in case anybody doesn't remember from school what factorial is, um, fact five factorial means that you multiply, oh, I thought it was gonna save it in the memory. Why didn't it save it in the memory? So five factorial is 120. So that's what that means that this digit is. So in order to get to uh, this number here, we obviously need to take a few of these. In fact, it's saying we need to take three of these. So we're gonna say times three. And that's gonna get us 360, okay? 360, we wanna add four times four factorial. So we're gonna say add four times four uh, factorial. And I don't think I have a factorial button when I'm in programmer mode, so if I do, I'm not seeing it. Then I could say it's four times four times three times two times one. Now obviously the one doesn't matter, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, and then we wanna say plus, and the next one is one times three factorial, so we're gonna say three times two. Now obviously I don't have to multiply times one twice. And then we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna skip the zero because we don't need to add that. And then one times one factorial, so plus one. And we got 399, so I apparently skipped one. I wish it would keep in the memory. It's supposed to keep memory there. I thought it was supposed to, I thought it saved memory. Oh, I skipped one. Uh, you missed a, th a times three in the factorial four. Okay. Uh, uh, not in the programmer one, I should have switched to the programmer one. Uh, the, yeah, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 should have been what uh, 4 factorial was. I might have missed one in the in when typing that, but that's the intention, even though I apparently screwed it up when typing it into a calculator. Um, that is the intention for what you're supposed to get there. Uh, so I wanted to explain basically what that is. Uh, I remember seeing the first recursive version of the... It wants me to do it recursively? Does it say that? I hope not. I don't want to do this recursively. I mean, I could. <laughs> I'm like, that just sounds nasty if you're doing it that way. Because, I mean, you could do something where you're like passing something. But, okay. And, uh... Thank you, SMB, for uh, illustrating that point there. Do we want to go number to string first or string to number? I'm thinking string to number first, because I think that'll be the easiest one to do. Um, so let's do this. So I'm going to do four. Uh, oh, no! I've been defeated. I wanted to do something. Let me show you what I was going to do. I wanted to, so I wanted to use C sharp 8. They are going to run it as C sharp 7.3, which means I cannot use uh, our negative indexes that we finally have in C sharp. Um, uh, the, um, oh, we should reverse the string at first. Uh, feel the greed, yes, we could, we could reverse the string or we can go backwards either way. Um, the advantage, uh, so I was going to use reverse indexes, so I did not have to reverse the string. So that was actually what I was planning on doing. Um, and uh, was, was someone just putting in the link uh, to the uh, exercise here? Um, I will toss that in there. Um, oh! Uh, thank you, SNB. Good job. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. Never mind. Uh, and SNB got it, so, so we're good. Okay, all right, so let's do this first. So um, let's say um, ordered 
we'll just go ahead and do this. We're not worried about efficiency right now. Uh, let's go ahead and reverse this string. I think I have to two-string it, because I think that'll leave it as an innumerable of characters. Yep. So we're going to reverse it and two-string it, and there it is. Uh, I'm only two-string it because, I, you know, I guess I don't even need to two-string it. But I might as well, so that we, because I could array it also, and it'd be the same thing. <laughs> All right. Um, ordered. Uh, uh, ordered. Dot length. I promise I know how to type. Okay. Uh, so we want to start at zero because it's going to be zero factorial. Uh, and I assume math has factorial. Um, does it not? C sharp not have a math like not have math factorial. Do I seriously have to multiply it myself? <laughs> it doesn't just have math factorial. What? Am I crazy? Oh man, it doesn't. That's weird. Okay, I'm. <laughs> Well, uh, in that case, I'm going to make myself a little helper. Because um, that's what we're going to do. Um, yeah, I, th uh, I thought I would have math.fact or something. Uh, what is the feature? Um, uh, detonate. Uh, if you want to take a look, uh, go ahead and look up ranges and indexes. Uh, ranges and indices in uh, C Sharp 8, if you take a look, you'll see that uh, there are uh, reverse indexes. Uh, they use the the hat operator, so uh, it would look like this. So we would say ordered, and then we would say like that, and that would actually do a uh, negative index. So that, uh, for example, gets you the, the last item in the collection. That's the second to last. Uh, but we don't have that because we're supposed to be in C sharp 7.3. Um, yeah, I thought math.fact would be in there. Um, uh, yeah, Julius, there's um, oh, many other programming languages have had reverse indices for a long time. I don't know why it took C sharp so long to get it. Uh, okay, so. Um, uh, let's see, n, uh, n, okay, so we're actually going to start n at n, and while n is greater than zero, um, long, uh, we are going to, uh, this is just going to be messy, um, I realize, um, Uh, so, oh, yeah, it's going to be uh, times equals um, i. So this is going to be 1. And we don't need to do the final multiplying of 1. So 1, and then, and I don't know why I'm calling it sum. I should just call it total. Or factorial. Fact. And then return it down here. Is there anything crazy about this? Um, uh, never mind, uh, shouldn't that be equals greater than? Uh, no, in C-sharp it's greater than or equal to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's nothing new when it comes to programming languages. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuel Snable is not wrong about that. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we use in, in uh, modern programming languages is just someone uh, taking a look at some things that had been done in the past and saying, oh, that's a cool idea, let's go ahead and bring that forward and use it again. Okay, uh, so all this is doing is basically saying start at the top number, take that, multiply by all the smaller numbers, and don't bother multiplying by one at the end. We technically already multiplied by one once. Okay. Uh, yes, fuel snable is correct. If you do that uh, little fat arrow there, it's going to be an inline function. Uh, and by that we mean a lambda expression. Okay, uh, so we want to go in reverse order of these numbers. So taking a look at this, we want to go in reverse order and we want to say um, 
number, whatever it is. So I'm going to assume that we're only getting digits. We're going to assume valid string for now and just do the conversion. Um, get numeric value. Uh, all right, I'll just do this. Uh, I'll just parse it. Uh, the the string for now. Oh, how do I always do this? We, uh, I guess we could just subtract zero, right? Uh, subtracting zero would do it. Um, but I hate that because no one can read it. So we're gonna int parse it. Ordered. Um, uh, I will two string it so no one kills us and number style will be integers um, and this will be digit so we're gonna say um, Sum is zero, so we're gonna say sum plus equals digit times um, No, we need to go we need to go through this the other way because I need to know the I guess I could do length minus uh let's have a look. So I want this to be five, and that's six. Yeah, it'd be like length minus i plus like plus one. That's that's just getting crazy. Length minus index is still off by one is the problem. Yeah, I I reversed it so, um, but I'm wondering whether or not I want to reverse it or whether I want to go through and reverse. Um, hmm. Yeah, okay, so we'll do factorial of um, ordered uh, length minus i. First, uh, highest digit, maybe highest base equals uh, ordered length minus minus one. That'll be the highest base. So it'd be highest base minus i, like that. Let me do it that way. Then I think that makes more sense in my head. Um, Yay, pink lights around the stream. Uh, yes, uh, I, I know some people that uh, currently use um, Erlang. Yeah, I like highest base because it, it makes sense for what we're doing. Because we are, we are, you know, doing like, they are, they are factorial bases. So digit times the factorial base added together might do it. Nope. Let's see how far off we were. So this is the one that is failing. 
Oh, input string was not the correct format. Um, huh. Ooh, rainbow. <laughs> um, that gonna work? I'll explain what I did if that works. Good, it didn't work. That would have been silly. Um, uh, every afternoon, uh, interestingly there actually used to be a handful of things that uh, would do that same concept, but no, we're not running live unit testing right now. Um, we, uh, we could, I guess there's no reason not to, but Yeah, so never mind. That's uh, that's basically the idea. We have to take. The, so we're doing a just a programming exercise. Essentially, what's going to happen is we're going to get a string of numbers, and the numbers are values in. They're basically the factorial of that number added together is the is the number. So this number would be uh, three times five factorial and four times four factorial, one times three factorial. Uh, plus one times well, well I guess one <laughs> but that's kind of the idea um, ooh you know what we do need to do um, if n equals zero turn one that has to always happen uh, wait uh, oh I is greater than, nope we already did that because I said I is greater than zero here uh, so I is that and continue as long as I is greater than one. So for one and zero, we return back one. We're good. I wrote it correctly to begin with. I don't have to short circuit it. Um, let's actually just look at what's happening when we run this. Uh, so it is input and expected. So we're running this one. Yeah, it's this one. Let's see what happens when we get this. So our string that we receive is uh, like we expect it. Oh, no, it's not. That's what's going wrong. All right, this is going to be... Uh, a character array then because I needed to create a string from it to stringing a character array does not just create that we'll to array that there we go all right so that's now a character array let's find out if it works now I was like something went horribly wrong we ended up with some very strange numbers I was like let's uh, System numerics, big integer. Thanks, Fuel Snabel. Yeah. Uh, welcome, Meg. Uh, thank you very much for that follow. Welcome to the stream. Okay, here we go. Now we have an error that just seems like we need to find what it is instead of uh, overlay down. The overlay is down. You're right. Hype didn't work. There we go. Uh, oh, I I think I started the bot after the stream. I bet um, this failed to connect at the beginning, and so uh, it wasn't it wasn't there. But yes, there's there's your hype. <laughs> I was like, I think it's connected. Okay, uh, let's have a look. We're gonna drop the breakpoint here again, and let's figure out what it's doing. 
I think that's the one. That will make things easier to... Oh, yeah, having the hype over the screen, yeah. I didn't do that while I was programming. Okay, so this should now be... Uh... Oh, 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 I already reversed it. You guys were totally right. You were all right. You were right. I reversed it. That's why I reversed it. You told me I was right. You said I'd already done that, and I was like, and I wasn't listening. You were all correct. Thank you, by the way. <laughs> hey, Renee. Uh, yeah, that uh, that hype was was a, a welcome to you. Welcome to the stream. Really? Maybe I'm maybe I'm smoking something and I don't realize it. Whoops. Meant to debug, not run. Alright, so that reverses the order, which means that the... F no, the first one we get to is the top one. I am smoking something, see? Let's debug this again. This time, we're going to use our brain. So the 3 needs to be multiplied by 5 factorial. Let's make sure that's happening. So when we get down to here, digit is not, uh, um, oh, because I'm dumb. Because when I was doing this, I did that. Uh, int dot parse um, that. There we go. Let's try that again. With a debugger attached. Because we're going to confirm that at that line we have 3 times 5 factorial, because that's what we're supposed to get. That's 0. Really? What was this digit? Hey, Polycipher! <laughs> Welcome to the stream! You managed to get here! Uh... Forty-eight and forty-nine. <laughs> Welcome to the stream. How was your subathon? Uh, it's reversed. Yeah, the list is reversed. But so, oh yeah, zero one. Yeah, so we are. So we are supposed to be increasing the value as we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so I have mul I'm I'm in the case where I had multiple problems again. So this is uh, times i factorial. Yes, that's when I said, wait, chat told me I had it reversed, and then I did it, and then I was like, wait, maybe I'm smoking something. But no, I'm not. I just had two issues, and that's what got me confused. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, oh, good. Um, I'm not surprised that you're tired. Uh, and uh, welcome to the stream, Polly. Uh, I'm uh, glad you glad you made it and glad you enjoyed that. Um, oh yeah, zero times that. Yeah. So now this next digit should be one, and then this should be one. Okay, good. Yeah, the uh, the stream's been going well so far. Um, we're doing a uh, a programming exercise here. There we go. Finally, I'm like that should just work. Like that should have been fine. There we go. Uh, removing that again. We absolutely do not need it. Uh, so now we're doing this mildly mildly overwork to do that conversion to an integer. I think we could pull that out with a character, but it's fine. Okay. Uh, next up, we need to go the other direction. So we need to take these numbers and convert them into this. So, how do we want to do it? Um, we could, um...
So I'm thinking that we want to start building up this uh, this string and adding numbers to it. Um, and slowly just shift them as we go. Um, and just shift the numbers up to the next row. I'm trying to think about that. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, that <laughs> uh, family's doing well, uh, Polly. Uh, I am uh, a, a parent of a small human that uh, runs around and, uh, uh, well, I, he's uh, starting to learn all his uh, letters and numbers and everything like that. Uh, he's been, um, he's uh, he's actually two now, so quite quite a uh, an, an old kid, you might say. Uh, no, no longer in, in that, uh, you know... Um, unable to just do stuff phase so uh, we are working on an exercise here uh, peeler I will toss a link to it in the chat for anybody that wants to have a look actually SNB tossed a better link at one point um, can I still see the link that SNB put in there it is um, yeah, the um, uh, we're doing it obviously in uh, in C sharp, and uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's a it's a weird one. So essentially, uh, what this exercise is having us do is converting our numbers from a standard you know base ten decimal number uh, into a factorial number, which essentially means that uh, each digit of the number. Uh, instead of it has a different base than the previous digit and the base is the factorial of the position of that digit so it's like it's slightly mind bendy uh, it's pretty heavy into math so not the normal stuff we program here on the stream but but fun every once in a while to work on uh, yeah Polly time really does fly I cannot believe he's two already but it's awesome um, and uh, yeah uh, Polly, try uh, try try changing the menu colors. Um, so you can do menu random, or you can do like red, blue, green, yellow, for example. Uh, you can actually control that little Final Fantasy VII menu there. So it's fun stuff. Anybody in the chat can actually do that, not just Polly. Anybody has control of those menu colors or the colors of the stuff that's going around out there. Oh. Uh, that works, yeah. Let me just try this. Uh, yeah, there it is. And then you can choose the one you want to do. There you go. Yeah, so Polly, you gotta do uh, you gotta do four colors if you wanna if you wanna get it. Uh, Polly, have you ever played Final Fantasy VII? I don't remember. Okay, so let's do this. Um. largest number that we can and then start reversing maybe because what I'm thinking is like we can either subtract numbers at which point we end up with extra numbers that we have to like not remove um, the other the other fun part is you can do stuff like this So you can do like these cool designs like that. So you can do like cool little patterns so you can see it's like a nice, you know, transition effect like that. Uh, as long as you think about the colors you use. And the other neat thing is that you can actually use hex codes as well. So, yeah. So for anybody uh, in here that uh, knows their hex codes, um, And 
and uh, there it's gonna be really a strange design but yeah you can do based on hex codes or named colors either way okay so um, while uh, NB greater than zero we're gonna do this um, and then which I probably shouldn't do this as a string to be honest I probably should have this in in a different structure um, but a string is fine for now I love that it gives me a warning. It's like, hey, by the way, you never changed this number, so you can't actually do that. Uh, and yes, you're, you, it is correct. Um, as, um, actually, I could do this as a for loop instead. Um, Actually, um, find largest digit. Um, start index equals find largest. Uh, find find largest. Do I really want to do it that way? That seems that seems weird. Um, Yeah. Start index equals find largest. Um, find largest base index for NB. Maybe I'm crazy on that one. Can we modulo the rest of the result? In fact, uh, modulo the result. Uh, you know, I've honestly have a few ideas for stuff, I would absolutely love to have one on the channel. Uh, uh, so sounds good, Polly. We can talk about stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, feel the greed. It's, it's often tough when you're looking at these. You're like, can't you just do this? Like, maybe. That's part of why we've got the tests, is because it'll tell us if we're wrong. Um. <laughs> well, Polly, we can, we can fix that. Uh, we, we can definitely make you better at programming. Uh, so while i is greater than, um, while i is greater than or equal to zero, because we do allow zero, and we're gonna say i minus minus. So we're gonna we're gonna start with a high index and go down. So we're gonna find the largest base that fits into this. Is my plan. And apply that index as many times as it does which means just dividing it each time and, and reassigning the value okay uh, so that would be like NB uh, yeah so NB would be like uh, mo modulus equals to itself on that because uh, we need the remainder but we would need to do the division first to get the value uh, so So let's make this a uh, an int array, and we'll call this um, numbers. Oh, this is not no 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 no. This is a list of ints, not an array, not an array. Um new list of integers uh, so we're just gonna do numbers dot add 
uh, and it's going to be um, NB divided by um, the factorial of I that's gonna be a long but I want it to be an int because it'll never be very large so we're gonna store it as an int despite the fact that fact the factorial is always gonna return a long because that's the number of uses of that, not the actual thing. So that divided by that is going to be this. And then NB equals NB percent uh, factorial of I. Right? Um, so we'll call this actually uh, start uh, fact, uh, fact. Yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. I think that makes more sense. Um, uh, you think you are a hopeless case. Uh, Polly, I disagree. Uh, I actually think you could learn to program. Um, I think you just haven't uh, probably approached it the right way. Uh, what's wrong? Divisions module should uh, do the trick. Um we start from zero factorial. Uh, I still don't know what the problem wants. I'll <laughs> no, never mind. It's just confusing. Ollivander, uh, how long did it take to feel comfortable with programming? You're in your first CS course in college, and you're struggling unless you resort to Google for help. Okay, so first off, never feel bad about jumping over to Google to look stuff up. We always have to do that. Uh, in terms of feeling comfortable programming, um, oh, geez. I don't have a great answer for you on that one, only because I learned to program as a kid. Um, I mean, I was like, you know, in my teens, but I did learn to program as a kid. And um, I was programming websites, I was programming in JavaScript, uh, and uh, I programmed calculators and, and the like. Um, I did all kinds of little things that didn't matter. Um, the internet was like available kind of as a resource, but back then there was very little stuff. So um, pretty much I think one of the best ways to help you as a programmer starting out is um, first off, you need to understand the fact that you're not a bad programmer just because you're struggling with stuff. We all struggle with stuff. Um, that is absolutely normal and that is probably the biggest barrier that like younger programmers need to get past is that you are probably better than you think but too much of our time is spent looking at articles where someone has just done this amazing thing and you skip past the you know hours that they spent banging their head against the wall trying to figure out how to do it uh so um, oh, first off, um, welcome, uh, Bala Bala. You followed like 11 minutes ago. Thank you very much for that uh, follow. And uh, Bramdev, thank you as well for the follow. Welcome to the Dev Chatter community. Um, <laughs> and yeah, isn't that, isn't that awesome, Polly? And the funny thing is, you can control that live in the game. Hang on. I don't think Polly's seen this. In fact, I don't think all of chat has. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to detour for a second and uh, show you all that. Um, I'm going to show you actually what what that is controlling uh, if if the game is really running so all right but we'll still take a look at this code uh, so we want to do numbers uh, let's say new string uh, and it's going to be numbers dot reverse uh, to array right Oh, nope, that just does it in line. Forgot about that. Because that's, that's not the link one. Whereas the other one was the link one. Uh, two array. Oh, um, whoops. Select. Um...
I am not doing this here. That's ridiculous. Um... Oh, what, why is my my brain's not working today, everybody? I'm I'm gonna admit that right there. My brain is just not working. I don't know why it's not working, but it's not. <laughs> All right, so uh, here's the short distraction that I was gonna make. Uh, Polly, Polly, take a look. This this is what you're controlling. There you go. So. Uh, just for everybody in chat uh, that might be wondering, um, yeah, so that menu there, when you're changing that, if I load Final Fantasy VII, you're also changing that. So this is the default menu in Final Fantasy VII. It's this color when you start playing the game. Uh, and the game has built-in ways of changing the window color, see? But that's clunky, and it's much nicer if you give chat control. Because uh, we actually have named color palettes, so you can get this one, and then it's, you know, the, the, the Brendan color palette. Uh, or you can just do random, or you can specify the four colors that you want to use. Uh, so, like, that's really nice uh, menu color uh, that you get control of. And, uh, Polly, you apparently haven't seen anything that we've been building. Uh, so, for example, if I want to change the name of Cloud, uh, we could name Cloud Polly. And Cloud's name is now Polly. Uh, so chat actually gets full control over all the characters' names as well. And if we wanted to name Tifa uh, Cypher. So there you go. Now it says Polly Cypher Rules. Congratulations, buddy. Uh, so that's the neat thing. And then uh, we also did some other craziness. Uh, so we're not, we're not actually working on this today, but... Um, uh, I figure I'll show everybody like what it is that we're building because I was mentioning it to someone. Um, so the other craziness is that um, in addition to changing character names and menu colors and things like that, we actually have control of the gameplay as well. Uh, so if you watch our characters, um, I can put the top character to sleep, uh, put regen status on the middle one, and you know it'll put the bottom one to sleep as well. Uh, so, oh, go back to sleep. Someone woke him up. Uh, so, you'll see that I actually have, like, status control, so I can, I can petrify the middle, oh, uh, whoops, middle character's petrified. Uh, so, that's the funny part, um, is, like, you can do this kind of stuff, uh, just, like, right in the game and give chat control of that. Sorry, every afternoon, I don't have, uh, the settings right to let everybody just use it right now, but you'll notice that, uh, it's just one of those, like, yeah, while you're playing, you can just start applying status effects, so it's a little crazy. But, um, it works. And, uh, yes, Vile, Frog, Frog is available. Um, hang on. When I'm not in the screen, it pauses. So that's why you'll notice it stopped right there. Um, oh, did I also fire a big shot? I apparently also fired a big shot. Uh, yes, Polly, I have turned Final Fantasy VII into a Twitch-integrated game. Um, there's a lot of stuff we haven't done with it yet, but plenty that we have, so it's kind of neat. Either way, not planning on running that today, but I figured I'd show people all the same just because it's kind of awesome. Uh, yeah, sorry every afternoon. Uh, we, we don't start everybody off with gil, but I'm glad you figured out what the gil command was. How does it interface? Uh, so vile, that's the crazy part, is, uh... The program, so that's actually one of the programs that we usually work on on the stream, uh, but um, uh, that's one of our like recurring projects that we work on here. Um, it actually is accessing the memory of the game while it's running. So we are just going in and actually changing the state of the game directly, like in the game itself. So as far as it's concerned, it has no idea that anything's going on. We're just going in and saying, oh, 
What's the current status effects? Okay, cool. We just read that and make the change to it and reassign it back into the game. Uh, just live while it's running. Um, uh, in addition to that, the other thing that you're not seeing while we're doing that, and actually let's see if this reloads correctly. Um, so here's the funny part. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh this real fast. So... Um, Let's open up this, because uh, I do want to show people, because it's neat. So if you look over here, you'll notice that this is a this is a browser window here. So we can actually make a stream overlay that runs along the side and has the current status in the game. So you'll notice that that matches with this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cheat Engine, eat your heart out. Yeah, so if, if you, you could just run Cheat Engine, but uh, this is a little bit more interesting. So if you look on the left, it's actually listing the character's uh, equipment. So you'll see that it's got the Buster Sword, the Mithril Armlet, Metal Knuckle, etc. Uh, but you could actually do things like this. Um, so I could equip Cloud with Ultima Weapon, and all of a sudden you'll notice he has empty slots, and it says Ultima Weapon. So not only can I just change a character's weapon using a command, and chat can do those kinds of things as well. There's just a cost set to it. So if a streamer's playing this, you can give them better weapons, you can give them worse weapons, you can give them bad status effects, you can take away all of their stuff. Whatever you want to do, you are fully capable of, of doing it just as part of this. And uh, it's, it's really kind of awesome because there's also a status display, so anybody that's watching the stream can actually see the state of the party just while you're in the game. And uh, then we also have evil stuff like this one uh, that will actually remove all of their money. You'll notice that they're down to two gil. All of their items are set back to default. <laughs> They've lost all of their equipment. So there, there are some evil commands in there too. Obviously, if you were going to run this on stream, you'd want to set those expensive, but... It's possible. So we did some really neat stuff with that. So I figured I'd, I'd show that real fast because I think it's awesome. Anyway, um, back to this. Uh, so we want to take these tournament uh, strings and we'll just join them um, with, no, with no separator, I guess. Um, Uh, oh, oh, um, it's string.join, right? I did the split syntax for that. Uh, and separator at the beginning, like I was doing originally. Do, do. Uh, if it's going to be an enumerable strings, it can have a character separator, right? Uh, concat, yeah, that's what we wanted. String dot concat, that's the one. Okay, so we'll concat the string together and return it. Okay, let's get this out of the way and take a look at what's going on. Uh, putting certain parameters on those options and announcing the multiple choices in any given situation while doing a playthrough of Final Fantasy. Uh, yes, Polly. Uh, and the, the neat thing is that those are actually... So the, the way that you get gill, because you probably noticed that you have 500 gill, is every bit that you cheer in the stream gets you gill. So when you cheered 500 bits about a half hour ago, uh, you actually picked up 500 gill uh, in my stream. So you now have 500 gil to spend on Final Fantasy VII stuff. So you could, uh, yeah, exactly. So um, when I was renaming characters, you might remember that I was saying like, uh, I said like Cloud's name is Polly and I said 500. That was putting 500 gil towards that bid. So essentially the idea is whatever name currently has the highest total number of gil put towards it, that is the name of the character. So it's really cool stuff. Uh, Resense, uh, which hopefully that's how you pronounce that. Welcome, thank you for that follow, much appreciated. Uh, yeah, so in that one it got pink, uh, oh, did that, what did it do with, how did it get hot pink out of that? I'm confused how it got that. Congratulations, Polly, all the, all the colors have to be one word, so 
Um, so like, so you do like orange red instead of menu orange red, right? Um, but this is the mean one, uh, which I didn't do while the thing was all up there, but lime is the most painful color. Although actually maybe on mine it's kappa right now. Yeah, that is a thing that people wonder is whether or not there's spaces in there, but there are not. Okay, uh, so we need to find what the largest base is. Okay, let's read this instruction set again. So in this, we have to do... Uh, what's the limit of the base? The limit of the base is the same... So the highest digit allowed is the same as the number we're using for our factorial. So, what that means to me um, when we're doing that is um, that we want to um, multiply by that number. Uh, so, and go until we are over it. So, we're going to say um, int index equals... Because there, there can be a zero, right? Yeah, there would be a zero. That's almost my exact profile name color. Oh! Uh, yeah, it, it happens. Uh, all you need to do is have the right one. Polly, you would actually really like another thing that I built, which I, I actually built a thing. Uh, I, I was building a custom uh, program that's actually for the same chat bot that you use. Um, I was working on a Sith detector, and uh, it determines whether or not someone is a Sith based on the uh the color of their name in twitch so if they chose a specific color for themselves on twitch we check to see whether the hue is some version of red so if it is like red or orange or something like that it's going to say that they're a sith and if it doesn't it says they're a jedi so like all the other colors you know the greens the yellows the the purples the the blues, all those are, are all uh, Jedi, and all the reds and oranges are Sith. So it's pretty funny. Okay, um, return index. <clears throat> so I want to say while um, index times factorial of the index value. Uh, is less than NB, we will increase the index. So let's, uh, so in theory, this actually could be a, a for loop instead of uh, this one. Um, so why don't we do that, actually? Uh, um,. Uh, welcome, uh, Judy. Uh, thank you very much for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, yes, Polly, you are a, a, a Jedi by that measure. Uh, have you ever programmed anything like a digital spin wheel? Uh, funny enough, Polly, someone really wanted me to make a, uh, a spinner wheel uh, for my chatbot when we were working on that at the beginning of the stream. Uh, we never did build one. His name was Wheel Spin on Twitch, which is hilarious. Uh, when you played Knight's of the the old republic i think you meant kotor knights of the old republic i think they realized jedi are awkward hypocrites and then switch to sith lord which i play as lawful evil <laughs> yeah uh there's there's <laughs> there, there's definitely some question over how good the jedi are um i i will give you that um <laughs> it's questionable uh, in, whoops, 
uh, index plus plus. All right, uh, I think that is a scary thing that will scare people. Um, find the largest base, I think that does it. Keep increasing until that is, uh, until this number is greater than that. And then return the one that exceeded it. Or equal to it. Yeah, or equal to it. Yeah, I'm gonna flip it. Um, we could write it differently. We could change this to the while. Here, let's let's flip back. It probably made more sense as the while loop. Probably confused fewer people. Uh, okay, hang on. Polly, what colors do you want? Polly, tell me what tell me what four colors you want. Just type your four colors. Uh, no, it, uh, never mind. I don't want to do an initial one because... Uh, oh, actually, you know what? You're right because we'd never return back zero. Unless the number's zero. Number zero, we do need to do that. Okay. There, there's the poly colors. Let's see. So, I think that works, doesn't it? I think it does. Let's let's see if we end up in an infinite loop or something ridiculous like that. Uh, so, never mind uh, the in on that parameter. Uh, no, no, no. That's not a C sharp new question at all. Um, that uh, part of the reason why you don't know what that is is because it's new. Um, that is was only at so. This was added uh, in like C sharp seven dot X, so it's like one, two, or three. I forget which one this was added in, uh, but uh, this essentially means that we're not changing that value in here. So we we can get rid of that. It's not actually necessary, but it was automatically put in when I created the method because the tooling said, "Hey, you're you're probably not changing this, right?" So because this is uh, this essentially is just an in value that's not being modified in here is all that's saying. Uh, and yes, Fuel Snable, KOTOR was a fantastic game. Uh, yes, precisely. And uh, thanks, uh, Detonate. <laughs> 7.2, I couldn't remember which one it was. Uh, so funny enough, I've done a lot of talks on those, but I now blend together a couple of the versions. Like, I can't remember which ones 7, 1, 2, and 3. Um, but uh, there were different focuses on each one, so... <laughs> there you go, Vile, yes. Uh, if you want to do, so if you want to do a single color, you actually only need to type in one, uh, vial if you want to do a single color. So you could do, like, uh, menu lime, for example. And also keep in mind that if you just type in a, just a color name, you can control my, um, my overlay color as well. So you could do, you know, red if you want to make that, uh, red, and then you'll notice that these colors are now red for those little lights that are blinking around the screen. Okay, uh, what is going on with these tests? I'm assuming they're failing. Are they failing for the right reason? Uh, 
Oh, oh, look at that! Look at that! It's just not reversed! Ha ha! I didn't reverse it, or I did reverse it? <clears throat> Do I not reverse it? Oh yeah, because I'm adding on to the end each time. Yeah, never mind. I don't need to reverse it. Because I, I add to the right. I was originally thinking, yeah, I'm going to want to insert, but no, I'm not. I'm just going straight in. So there we go. Yay, it works. Okay, so. Initial version. Let's go make that, let's go make that pass out here and make sure that it passes the same check that they want to have it pass. So we're going to take this and put it right here. Because we're using their their method names just so that it doesn't yell at us. And spacing is going to get all messed up. I'm not worried about that. Uh, so if you want to see, uh, this is the code we put in here. Um, and then that's the test that we're going to run a sample test against. If their sample test isn't very good, but this is going to find out, did we have any errors that they don't like? Oh, uh, sorry, I need my usings. Derp. I need to put the usings at the top. Um... There we go. And this will tell us, does it compile? Does everything run? Uh, this was me. I did, I did that. That's not correct. When I didn't totally understand the problem when we were first reading it, I, I made a modification to the test. Okay, so the test they gave us passes. Let's go ahead and give it an attempt now and see if it works. Ooh, what is that? They expected, oh, they expected A. Oh yeah, because we're going to have to switch into hex when we do this. Uh, we're going to have to switch into a different base. Um, yes. Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay, so instead of two-stringing it like this, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, actually, can I two-string it like that? And then tell it the base? No. Um, I want to do it like this. Um, uh, guess I could X, but then... So that technically should do it now. Let me make sure this still works. I should put in I should put that in as an example. Where is this? See, I wish they told me what the test case was. Because now I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be converting it correctly either. Um, yeah, because I'm not gonna parse it right. Um, maybe it's in a number style. Uh, allow hex. hex number. We'll say hex number for now. So we're only going to get up to base 16 on this. We're going to hope they didn't go beyond that because I don't I don't know necessarily if we're going to be able to do that. We're going to have a uh, we're going to have an issue there. <laughs> hey, did Vile, Vile spelled uh, fuchsia correctly. Good job. Yes, that's how you spell it. Uh, oh, you'd spelled it incorrectly at first, but yes. <laughs> yep, that's you got to spell fuchsia correctly or it won't work. It's not supposed to be that difficult, and and part of the thing that makes us take longer uh, is just that we we chit chat about stuff. Um, we're just having fun with this. We're not we're not here to do crazy stuff. What digit was that? Uh, I guess I should. 
at index at uh so that's supposed to be an 11 digit so that was supposed to be 10 so factorial. Thank you. So I think that is, uh, oh, actually that was not correct. Um, so this would be one at that distance and then A would be Uh, what is a 10? Um, why did I multiply by 10 with a calculator? <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I was just not even thinking it was just typing it in and I was just like type like yeah yeah Brendan you totally need a calculator to multiply by 10. That's how it works. Uh, and you're, and you, yeah Paul there's a poly menu color did you really just <laughs> oh yeah Polly well I hard coded my color palette into the actual program itself so that anyone that runs this program has my color palette regardless uh, so uh, there's also um, the uh, color palette choice of the person that suggested uh, doing the menu color thing to me and then we also put in automatically the color palette choice of the person that suggested uh, the menu color change thing to him. So the people whose idea it was uh, and suggested I made it, I put in their uh, menu color palettes for them. Because why not? Let's see if all these tests run. I don't know if Suna or Strife are in chat right now. They may not be. Ooh, that is slow. Maybe those big numbers are getting us. There is no, there is no menu lucky. Yeah, I think we're caught in something. think we might have overflowed along did we overflow along we might have no no it just took forever but we got it okay yikes um okay let's see what happens when we put this in again We're going to copy in just the methods and see what happens. So just the methods, not the uh, not the class. We'll attempt it again. Uh, hey, Polly, have a good one. Take care. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, glad you made it to a stream. Uh, number styles does not exist. I need to update the usings again. All right, that's fine. It's going to be the globalization that's missing. Yep, there it is. Uh, let's see. You found a pretty interesting pull stream pattern like I enumerable that actually uh, performs pretty well. Oh, fuel snable. That's, uh, that's actually really useful. Hey, there we go. You've passed all the tests. Yay. Our code doesn't work that well, but yay, because we actually only handle up to base 16. <laughs> We, we, we don't go beyond that. Uh, how high up did this test? It doesn't tell us in the test. They're just numbered tests. Great. So, yay, we did it. Uh, so that was the thing we were working on today. Um, I thought it was pretty fun. Um, not, a, uh, not a super complicated thing, but enjoyable all the same. Um... 
Yeah, Fuel Snable, if you've got links to it, that would be that would be fun. Uh, so I'm going to toss Mako, because that one's also a fun one. Sadly, Polly left before you could see Mako, because that's good stuff. Um. <laughs> Hammerhead? I don't know what Hammerhead would be. Nomad! Alright, couple of things I want to make sure that I mention, because people are here and paying attention for a moment. Uh, so first off, if you haven't yet, seriously, you should check out our Discord, because um, I want to get more people chatting over there. Uh, right now, we do have a good group of people. Um, everybody that's in the Discord is, you know, a member of our community that probably is someone that wants to chat with other people about programming stuff. Uh, so discussions like what Fuelsnable was just talking about, about finding an interesting thing, uh, that's the kind of stuff that uh, we want to chat about over there. Uh, so if you see something cool or are interested in some, you know, bit of technology, feel free to take a look at it and chat about uh, the the topic with us over there. You can post a link to it, for example, like what uh, Fuel Snable's doing there. And uh, yes, as Void Dev did, uh, as I'm about to mention, thank you, Void Dev, for making a great example. If you haven't yet, make sure you click the follow button. This is the best way to get notified when we go live. Uh, so right now, my streaming schedule is much lighter than it used to be. Uh, obviously, you can tell from our episode count being on 225. I've been doing this, or 226, 226, I hope it says 226, uh, that we've been doing this stream for a while. Uh, we're actually coming up on our two-year anniversary of the Dev Chatter stream. Uh, so uh, we've done a lot of streams here on the channel uh, and done a lot of interesting stuff uh, Which if you are interested in finding any of that uh, the best way to do that is to check out our YouTube archives uh, Over at youtube.com slash C slash dev chatter because uh, I've got everything organized into playlists so You can actually follow along and, and see how we did some things uh, you can also just search there to, to find an episode you're interested in um, some of the really fun ones are the uh, pair programming ones. We've got uh, a bunch where I had guests on the stream uh, and we worked on stuff together, uh, including a few where we were just chatting about stuff. Um, I'm going to go with Trip uh, for that name. Thank you for that follow, by the way, Trip. Much appreciated. Um, and lastly, uh, obviously, you can feel free to follow me on Twitter. I'm on there as well. Uh, Celtic, hey, thank you for following. Uh, welcome. Fuel Snable. No, none of us know what we're doing. Uh, wait, Mass Effect is another game? You want a Mass Effect 1 remaster? Oh, I would love a Mass Effect uh, 1 remaster. So, um, <laughs> jumping over to games for a second. Uh, I'm a big fan of both Mass Effect 1 and 2. I think they're both really, really good games. Uh, I think that um, they really got the a, a better feeling game for the second one though I still like Mass Effect 1 better it's one of those um uh how to describe so Mass Effect 1 I think sh could have been a better game if it were not made first I think most of its problems were technical and it felt a little bit clunky so I think redoing Mass Effect 1 would make a better game um but yeah they're both they're both very very good um I I really enjoy what uh, Bioware did with that series um Celtic, uh, these are not earbuds. Um, I can actually hear the whole time because these are actually, uh, a, it's a bone conductive headset. Um, and I've got, you can find a link to it down below in the panels under the stream. Uh, there's like a, they have an Amazon widget. So when anybody asks like what stuff I use for the stream, so my, my lights, cameras, microphone, other stuff like that. Although I have, um, Two of my lights uh, are, are not on right now, which is why you're getting like this little effect behind me that, that you can kind of tell that I've got a green screen back there because uh, um, that light's not on and, and that light's not on. So um, the green screen's not lit very well right now, but um, <laughs> so it's kind of not not the best view right now, but, uh, it, the, but that piece does work there. And I'm a big fan of these headsets because I can actually hear everything around me. Uh, because my ear is not actually blocked at all. This is just sitting in front of my ear. So, um, as I said, links down below. I think it's I think a company's. In, I think it's like Trex or something, or maybe it's Trex. Um, I don't remember what their their name is. Something like that. It's a it's a weird name. Um, they're not too pricey. They work pretty well. Um, I I'm a like I like these because um, at least while I'm streaming on the weekends, I have a uh, a small human that's taking a nap while I'm streaming. And uh, if he gets up and starts uh, yelling stuff, uh, yeah, that's it, Celtic. Aftershocks. There you go. Yep, that's what it is. 
Trex must be the like the the um, like model of these, and Aftershocks must be the company. Uh, so yeah, they they work pretty well. Like I've I've been using them for quite a while now. Um, I mean, if you check old videos of my stream, I've been using them this whole time. Um, and I, I actually use them uh, like just while I'm doing stuff. So if I want to listen to music, but I want to still be able to hear everything around me, because uh, obviously you know um, I'm at home right now. So uh, if my wife wants to talk to me uh, while I'm like coding or something like that, um, I can I can be you know headseted on so that like I'm not waking up a small human, but still hear everything around me. So uh, super nice. Mass Effect Two, the first demo mission they released. Um... I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't remember what you're talking about, Fuel Snow. It's been a long time since I played that, but good stuff. Good stuff. So I, I, I will say that um, I love programming. I love working on, on programming projects on the side, but I do hope that uh, everybody has um, hobbies and things like that not related to the computer, though I do like video gaming as well. Um, it's usually a good idea to have a, a non-computer related hobby. Uh, okay, Fuel Snable sounds good. Um, yes, never mind. These these would be like the opposite of a noise-canceling headphone. So, um, I haven't tried them for, for running, because I don't usually, like, um, exercise with a headset on, but I know people that do. I would guess that if these stay on your head pretty well, like, if you're, because they, they aren't, they aren't size adjustable, so you gotta have the, the right size head for these to work, um, but I would guess if these stay on pretty well, it's probably nice, because you could hear cars and, and, like, other things like that because it does not block any sound <laughs> it's dev chatter we, we we write code we chat about stuff sometimes it's programming stuff we talked about you know some intricacies of c-sharp we did a little bit of uh, programming exercises it's it's good uh, yeah so uh, if it's one of those things like people bring bring up whatever you want to talk about. There's uh like if if it's if it's some kind of nerdy thing, and uh, that goes for any any uh like you know nerdy geeky you know topic. It doesn't have to just be one of the like, um, you know sci-fi or something like that. You know maybe someone's really into like anime or something. You know maybe they they want to talk. You know maybe they're you know. Um, Maybe they want to discuss the fact that, like, um, uh, oh, what's it called? Um, like, Magical Girl anime is actually becoming fairly, like, uh, mainstream and coming out of different countries now. Uh, my, my nieces, for example, um, watch a, a uh, show, what is it called? Uh, I think the English name of it is, like, Ladybug and Cat Noir. And uh, it's, like, a French anime, you'd almost say. And it's, like, a Magical Girl anime. It's pretty cool. Celtic, hey, uh, and uh, a a follow in five minutes later, subbing with a Twitch Prime sub. Welcome. Uh, I think we need some hype in the chat, uh, which also means you get a nice Chatosaurus egg as well, uh, next to your name, and a fun set of uh, a uh, Chatosaurus emotes. So. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, we, we need we need some dancing in the chat uh, so yes uh, the uh, I think it's pretty neat because it's one of those like it's like oh yeah it was like a modern modern version of the stuff that uh, you know was was on uh, back in the day and it's like oh yeah it's magical magical girl anime that's that's kind of funny it's like you wouldn't think of that because you'd be like you'd be like wait what it's like that's not anime this is like no it is when you watch it you're like no, nope, that is exactly what this is. It's it's like the modern version of of uh, like a, a Sailor Moon or a, a Card Captor Sakura or something like that. Uh, it really much is is that. Um, Vile depends on which emotes you're talking about. So um, my initial set of emotes, the so first off, the ones that you see here uh, were done by uh, someone on Fiverr. His name, uh, um, his, I think it's his. Uh, his name is Night Artist eighty six. That's um. Night Artist 86, I think. I got that correct. And the one that did uh, these emotes, um, like this, 
so this set, which is like a more cartoony uh, style, um, I forget what her thing is, so let me try and look it up real fast. Um, um, what the heck is her name? Um, 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 hang on. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. Uh, yeah, there it is. Okay, hang on. Uh, um,. Where is her, uh, yeah, see, I could remember the other one, like, super easy. Um. There it is. Okay. Found a link. That's the person that did our, our current set of emotes. So, there you go. If you are wondering, that is the person that uh, that, that did these emotes. Um, uh, she does some really nice emotes. Um, lots of, like, uh, they, they, she makes, like, cute little emotes. Uh, Night Artist does more, like, anime-style emotes. Uh, so, um, there's there's a couple of different ways you can go on that. Either way. Um, like, there's all kinds of nice styles, so if you, if you find emotes you like, check them out. They could be really good. Um, she is also the one that did Polly Cypher's emotes, who you might have seen in here before. Uh, so, Polly has these nice emotes. Yeah. That's Polly Cypher. Uh, he was in here before. He is uh, a full-time Twitch streamer, does gaming streams, things like that. Um, awesome guy. I enjoy his streams. Okay, so uh, you failed to intimidate a 12-year-old... Uh, Well, that's just weird, Fuel Snable. Uh, either way, um, I am planning on... Uh, oh, speaking of games, Disco Elysium. Oh, oh okay. that That's the game you're talking about. You're basically a cop trying to solve a murder mystery while recovering from amnesia. You're poorly... Oh. Yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> I got it, Fuel Snable. I just had to go read what you were talking about. I'm like, I assumed you were talking about a, a game when you got to the, your cop partner, because as far as I know, you're not a, you don't have a cop partner in real life. Uh, but either way, um, I want to make sure that I thank everybody for, for hanging out today. Um, I had a good stream. I am going to wrap here because uh, I have a fairly busy day today. Uh, but uh, before you go, I want to roll our credits and uh, talk about a couple of things. Uh, so don't go anywhere just yet. Uh, I want to make sure that I thank Polycypher for uh, cheering on the stream today and Crimson Green and SMB for helping out, uh, keeping things going. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for that follow. Uh, Kava, I'm guessing, maybe? And I want to thank all these wonderful people for following us today. And uh, I want to thank Celtic for uh, joining the Dev Chatter crew as a subscriber. Uh, so thanks for hanging out. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the code. If you had questions about it, feel free to ask. The best place to ask questions about anything is over on our Discord. Feel free to join. Uh, if you don't know what Discord is, it's just a chat application. Uh, it's commonly used by gamers, Twitch streamers, uh, and it's used by a number of different projects as well. Uh, so... Uh, feel free to join, chat with us over there, and uh, if you want to catch archives of our old videos, they're over on YouTube, and uh, either way, um, I want to try and get a stream in this week during the week. I don't know what day it's going to be, so that's why I'm telling people uh, to make sure that you've clicked the follow button uh, and that you get notifications, because um, at least until my schedule clears up again, uh, 
it is going to be a little sporadic, so that's why I'm mainly doing these Saturday streams. Uh, so, but do expect uh, that I will be getting these streams in uh, at least on Saturdays, and if I can't do the Saturday, I'll switch it to a Sunday. Uh, so there'll be a one weekend stream uh, each week, uh, and I'm going to try to get some in the week, and it's pretty much going to be whenever I've got free time, because uh, my schedule is kind of packed right now. So, either way... Um, I want to make sure that everybody enjoys the rest of this uh, weekend. Hopefully, have some fun. Get outside if the weather's nice where you are, at least nice enough. And um, either way, have a great one. I will see you next week at, at least. Hopefully, I'll see you before then. But either way, happy coding, everyone, and uh, take care.